Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with Google Sheets in Python. So to do this, the first thing you need to do is you need to have an account with Google Developers. And once you're on your dashboard, you need to create a new project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project here. And then it doesn't really matter what the name is, I'll just create it. So it's creating and I'll just wait for it to finish. And I'll select my project. And then I want to search for products and resources. So what I'll search for is Google Drive API. Click this one and enable. Once it's enabled, I want to do the same thing for Google Sheets API. So just search for it and then Google Sheets API and then enable this. Okay, so once that's done, I'll be on this screen and I wanna go over to credentials on the left. And then I wanna click manage service accounts. So I'll click on that. And then I wanna click create service account up here and give it a name, a pretty printed service account. Doesn't matter what it is. Don't need a description. And then you can click create and continue. Don't have to do any grants, so just continue and then hit done. So you have this email here, so just click on the link. You wanna copy this email because this is the email that you're going to be using to connect to your account. So copy that email and then go over here to the share button and you just wanna put that email in there. And just make sure you get to this screen where you can share with people in groups and then send and then just verify that it has your original email and the service account email. So then what you wanna do is you wanna go back here, you wanna click the back button, you wanna to go to these three dots, and you wanna to go to manage keys. You wanna add a key, create key, and then JSON here, create and then you just wanna save it to your computer. And then that's it for the setup part uh, for your accounts and connecting it to your account on Google Sheets. Now that I have my private key file downloaded, I can move over to the text editor in the console. So I already have a file called script.py. I already have a virtual environment set up. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to install the library that I need, which is called gspread. So pip install gspread. And then after that's been installed, I want to move the private key file into a place where gspread can find it. So on Linux, that's going to be your home directory and then a, a folder called .config slash gspread. gspread. So what I'll do is I'll make this directory and then I'm going to move my file. So I'll just go to where your file is downloaded and then I wanna move it over to that directory. And I wanna call it service underscore account dot JSON. So if you're using Windows, I'll put the commands for Windows in the description below so you can basically do the same thing. And if you want, you can also move the service account file to your own directory, and then you can reference it in the code, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So once you have that moved to the appropriate place, you can import gspread. And then you want to connect to your service account first. So I'll call this SA and then gspread.service underscore account. So if you move this to the config directory, then this is all you need. But if you put it in your project or any other place, then you need to pass in the file name for the service file. So in this case, let's say I moved it to my project directory and I named it service underscore account.json, then this is what I need. But in this case, I moved it to the appropriate place so it can be used for multiple projects and I don't have to put it in this particular project directory. So once I have that, I want to connect to the actual sheet. So for sheet, I'll use sh as the variable. I'll start with the service account, so sa, and then open. And then I need the name of my spreadsheet. So in my case, it's student, I think students tests. And I can see that up here, so students tests. And I just wanna run this. And if I get no errors, then I know it works and I can change this to have an S so it's not found. And yeah, we see I get an error. So just make sure that when you 
have these two lines, you run it and you get no errors in return. So now what I can do is I can start working with a worksheet. So for worksheet, I'll use WKS and then I'll start with the sheet. So SH and then worksheet. And then I need to pass in the name of the worksheet. In my case, it's class data. Oftentimes it's sheet one by default, but you can change the name of your worksheet. So I have class data for mine. So now that we have that, I can start working with the spreadsheet. So let's start by printing how many rows and columns there are. So print, say rows, and I can use the worksheet dot row counts. And then I can do something similar for the columns. So worksheet dot call count can run the script. And we see I have 101 rows and 21 columns. So let's see. Well, here I only have 31 rows and five columns. But if I keep going down, I see I actually have 101 because there are empty rows that are being included. And if I go all the way over, it goes to you, which is about 22. So if I delete some of these, let's delete up to here. So delete rows. And now I'm left with 36, it looks like. If I run this again, I should get 36. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to get the value of particular cells. So let's start with getting the value of a single cell, and there are a couple ways to do this. I'll start with a worksheet, and I'll use the method called a cell. And let's say I want the value of A9. So I just put A9 in there as the argument to A cell, and then I get value on the end. I run it, and we see I get Dorothy. If I go over, A9 is Dorothy. Another way I can do it, is cell. So instead of a cell, I use just cell. And then I can pass in something like three and four. So let me comment out this one and then I'll run it. And we see I get a cell and to get the value for it, I can just put value on the end and it should be math, yes. So if I go over, what that means is I'm going down three rows, so down three and then over four columns. So over four, I get math. If I want to get more than one row, I can use get. So print, worksheet, get. And now I'm going to pass in the range of cells that I want. So this is going to be like a rectangle. So say for example, I want A7 through E9. So what that means here is I want A7 through E9. So I want this rectangle here. So it's going to start from Carl and go down to lacrosse. So if I run this, we see I get a list of lists and inside of the first list, each list represents a row. So I have Carl, who's a junior in Maryland, who's studying art and the activity is debate. And then it moves on to Carrie and then Dorothy. So Carl, Carrie, Dorothy. Let's verify that, Carl, Carrie, Dorothy. And then let's look at the activities, debate, track and field, lacrosse. We have debate, track and field, and lacrosse. All right, so just make sure you're creating a rectangle that you want and it returns a list of lists that kind of represents that rectangle. If I wanna get all the data, what I can do is worksheet, get all records, and then run this. So this one has a list of dictionaries. For each dictionary, the key or the keys will be the headers and the values will be the cell values. So I have student name, class level, home states, major, and extracurricular activity. So this can make it easy for you to get uh, particular values once you're going through all of the data. And if you want just a list of lists, then you can use get all values. And then I'll run this. And it returns a list of lists just like this get here. So now to manipulate some of the data, if I wanna update a cell, I can use WKS update, and then I need to pass in the cell. So let's do A3. I wanna change that to Anthony. So first let's see what it is. A3 is Andrew right now, but I wanna change it to Anthony. So I just have this update here. I run this. And now we see it's Anthony. If I want to update multiple rows, then I need to use the idea of that rectangle again. So update. This time I'll pass in a range. So let's say I want to update D2 through E3. So basically a two by two square. Then I need to pass in a list of lists. So the, 
So the first one will be the row D2 and D3, and the second one will be E2 and E3. So for D2 and D3, let's see what I'm updating here. So D is the major and the activity, right? And E is the activity. So for D, I wanna change it to engineering and the hobby or the activity, I'll say tennis. And then for the second one, so for the third row, I wanna change the major to business and the activity to pottery. So just make sure that the size of this list of lists matches what you're selecting here. So if I run this and go back, we see it updated the appropriate things. So engineering, tennis, business, pottery. And then finally for updating, what you can do is you can use formulas, so updates. And this time I want to put something in, let's say F2. So I'll specify F2, and then I can pass in a formula. In this case, it's going to be equal upper, so I wanna uppercase something. And I just wanna uppercase the thing in E2. So nothing crazy. When I'm using a formula, I need to pass raw equals false. So it doesn't just put this text in the cell, it actually evaluates the formula. So now if I run this and go back over, we see that the value here is just the uppercase version of the value here. So uppercase tennis. And I don't have any numbers, so I can't do a sum. But if you wanted to do something like a sum, then you just pass in the range of values that you're trying to sum. And of course, the place where you're going to put the sum. And then finally, the last thing I'll show you is something pretty simple, is just deleting a particular row. So I can say delete rows. And then if I want to delete, let's say the 25th row where Pamela is, I can just pass in the number 25 and then run it. And now we see Pamela is gone. Patrick has taken her place in row 25. So that was just a quick basic intro to working with Google Sheets and Python. There are a few more things that you can do, but I think the things that I showed you in this video can get you a long way. And given how simple the idea of a spreadsheet is, you should be able to figure out um, how to manipulate the data or just get the information from the spreadsheet so you can use it inside of your app. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about using G Spread or Google Sheets in Python, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.